hi everybody welcome to live blogger in this video we will start designing this nav menu using html css and javascript so here we can see when we hover over these nav menus we have this animation for this arrow and we also have these options displayed over here and if i go to the other nav menu we can see that the other options are displayed over here but uh, we can see that the height of the nav menu changes in a smooth manner when we go to the other menu items and if you go to resource we can see that we have an image with a larger width so the background also changes according to the width and the height of the content so this is what we're going to start designing in this video let's get started <laughs> Right here I have created this folder called nav menu and I just opened it with VS code. Now let's go ahead and create the necessary files. So let's create a new file called index.html and let's create another file called style.css and let's create one more file called main.js. Right let's start with the index.html file. Now in VS code you have this shortcut where you can just type exclamation and press tab and you will have this basic HTML5 code. Now here let's go ahead and link our CSS file. So let's type link and press tab. And here in the href let's type style.css. And uh, here in the body let's type script colon src and press tab. And here let's type main.js. Right now let's start with the markup of our design. So the first thing we need to do is uh, we need to create a nav element because this is basically a navigation menu. So let's type nav. And let's also give it a class so that uh, we can differentiate it with the other navs. So let's type main menu. Right now the next thing we will do is we will create another division with a class of menu items. And in this we will have all these menu items. So let's create an unordered list for these. So let's type ul. And in that we will have list items. And now in this list item we need to have the text and this icon. And also this menu content. So first of all, let's create a div with a class of menu container. And in that we will create another division for this menu title. So let's type division with a class of menu title. And here, first of all, let's add this text. So let's type products. And we need to have an icon. So for the icon, I'll just create a span. And let's use an icon from heroicons.com. Right here, I'm in heroicons.com and let's search for down. And uh, we can see we have this icon called Chevron down. So let's copy this and let's paste it over here. And now let's go outside this division and let's create another division with a class of content. And in this we will have the content of our menu. So here we can see that we have two sections. We have the left section and the right section. So let's create a division with a class of left. And uh, in this left section we need to have a heading. So let's create an S3. And uh, for the first one, let's type games. Right now below these S3s, we need to have these groups. Now these are basically links. So let's go ahead and create anchor tags. And uh, here in the href, you can add the link of your pages. For now, I'll just type hash. And let's also give it a class. So let's type class. And let's set the class name to group. Right now here inside this anchor tag, we need to have this title and this text. So let's create a division of the class of title. And here let's type Windows 11. And here let's create a paragraph. And I'll just type lorem 4. So this will add some random text. And now let's go ahead and copy this group. And let's paste it two more times. And here for the second one we need to type Linux. And then we need to have Mac. So let's add that over here. Right now we need to create the right section. So here also we have the same structure. So we can just go ahead and copy this left division from here. And let's paste it down here and I'll just call this one right. And uh, here for the heading we need to have apps. And then we need to have productivity and music. So here let's type productivity. And here let's type music. And I'll just delete this group. Now you can add any text you want over here. I'll just keep it as it is. And now let's open this in our browser and let's see how it looks. So I have this extension called Live Server installed in VS Code. 
So once you have this live server installed, you can just right click over here in the HTML and click on open with live server. And now we can see that our design is displayed in the browser. Now let's go ahead and add the other content. So the next thing we need to have is the next menu item. So let's go ahead and copy this list item from here till the end and uh, let's paste it three more times. Right now let's go to the second list item. So this is the first one and uh, let's go to the second list item. And here we need to type contact. So let's tap contact over here. And uh, then here in this content, we need to type services and email and phone number. So here let's type services. And here let's type email. And here let's add an example email. And here let's type phone. And let's add a phone number. And I'll just delete this group. And we can delete the right division from here. Right, that's it with the second menu item. And then for the third menu item, we have the left and the right sections, but we have just one link for each of them. So here, let's go ahead and type developers. And uh, here, let's type source code and assets. And uh, here, let's type assets. And then we need to add starter code and all assets. And I'll just change the text. And here let's type contact us. And now we need to have the second one in the right division. So let's cut this and let's paste it over here. And let's cut these two groups from here. And let's also cut the last group from here in the left section. Right now let's go ahead and uh, add an image for the resource. So here let's type resources and here instead of all this content, I'll just create an IMG tag and uh, let's add an image over here. So let's go ahead and copy this image link from here and let's paste it down here. But now if we go back to our website, we can see that all the content are displayed over here. We also have the image. Now let's go ahead and style this using CSS. So let's go to the style CSS file and uh, let's start by selecting all the elements and uh, let's type box sizing border box so that we have the correct width and height for all the elements. Right now let's go ahead and set the font family of the nav to Roboto and sans serif. Right now let's change the width of these icons. So we have the icons inside the menu title and in that we have the span. So let's type nav menu title span and let's set the width to 14 pixels and let's set the display to flex so that it is exactly in the center right now the next thing we need to do is we need to have all these list items which are the menu items one next to the other so here we can see all these menu items are one next to the other so for that let's go ahead and type nav menu items because we have this division with the class of menu items and in that we have the UL. So let's target the UL and let's set the display to flex. Now we can see that all the elements are one next to the other. And let's go ahead and remove the bullets. So let's type list style none. And let's set the default padding to zero. And let's set the font size to 16 pixels. Right now let's go ahead and hide all this content inside the menu items. So here we can see we have this division with the class of content and in that we have the content of the menu. So let's type nav menu items content and for now I'll just set the display to none. Right now let's continue styling this. So now let's style the menu title. So here we can see inside the menu title we have the text and the icon. So let's type nav menu title and we need to have the icon next to the text. So let's type display of flex. And let's set a gap of four pixels. Let's tap align items to the center so that the icon and the text are aligned vertically to the center. Right now, let's go ahead and add a padding of 12 pixels top and bottom and 16 pixels left and right. And by default, we'll set the color of the background to white. And when you hover over this, we need to change the background color. So let's go ahead and type nav menu title 
And we need to add the styles when we hover over the menu container. So here we can see we have the menu container. So when we hover over this menu container, we need to add the hover effect. So here let's type dot menu container colon hover. And here let's type background and let's set the background color to EDF 6 F9. And let's add a smooth transition. So here I'll just type transition and let's set it to all 200 milliseconds ease. And now if you hover over this, we can see that we have the background color changing. Now let's go ahead and set the cursor to pointer. So when you hover over this, we have the pointer. Now when we hover over this, we also need to rotate the icon. So let's do that. Here I'll just type nav menu container colon hover. And here let's tap span because the icon is inside the span. And here let's tap transform, rotate Z. And let's set the angle to negative 180 degrees. And we'll also add smooth transition. So here we can see that we have already added some styles to the span. So here let's start transition. All 200 milliseconds is. And now when we hover over this, we can see that the icon is rotating. Right now let's style the content. So we need to position the content relative to the nav. So here we can see that the content is always on the left side of the nav menu. So here for the nav, let's type position relative. And for the content, let's type position absolute. Now here we can see that all the content are displayed over here. So let's go back to the HTML file. And whenever we want to display any content, I'll just add a class of active. So here let's type active. And let's go back and here in the style or CSS file, let's type opacity of zero and pointer events to none so that the content is not displayed by default. And here let's type nav menu items content dot active. And here let's set the opacity to one and pointer events to auto so that we are able to click on it. So now we can see that the first content is being displayed. Now here for the content, let's go ahead and set the left position to zero and the top position to 42 pixels. And let's set the minimum width of the content to 500 pixels. And uh, let's set a padding of 24 pixels top and bottom, 32 pixels left and right. Right now we need to have this left content on the left side and the right content on the right side. So let's set the display to flex. And let's add a gap of 32 pixels between the elements. Now let's go ahead and style the S3 inside the content. So here we can see that we have S3 for the heading. So let's type nav content S3 and uh, let's set the margin top to zero. Let's set the font size to 13 pixels and let's set the text transform to uppercase and let's add some spacing between the letters. So let's type letter spacing two pixels. Right now let's style the group. So here we can see we have this anchor tag with a class of group. So let's type nav content group. And first of all, let's remove the underlines. So let's tap text decoration none. And let's set the color of all the text to black. And uh, let's set a padding of eight pixels top and bottom, 16 pixels left and right. Now, since the anchor tags are inline element by default, the padding is not added correctly. So let's set the display to inline block. Right now, let's also add some border radius for rounded corners and let's set it to four pixels. And now when we hover over this, we need to change the background color. So for that, let's type nav content group colon hover and let's add a background color of EDF 6 F9. And let's also add smooth transition. So let's type transition and let's set it to all 200 milliseconds ease. And now when we hover over this, we can see that the background color changes. Right now let's go ahead and style this title. So for the title, we have this division with the class of title. So let's type nav content title and let's set it to font weight of bold. And now let's style the paragraph, which is inside the group. So let's tap nav content P and let's set the margin to five pixels. And uh, let's set the font size to 14 pixels and let's set the opacity to 0.6. And this is how it looks. Now, if you go ahead and maximize this browser window, we can see that all the content are displayed one next to the other. So let's go back and let's target the left and the right divisions. So let's type nav content left 
nav content right and let's set the display to flex and the flex direction to column and let's set a gap of four pixels and uh, now we can say it looks all right right now the last thing we will do in this video is that we will add this uh, box shadow so for that we're going to create a different element because we want the box shadow to change the height based on the content and we need to animate it seamlessly so for that we need to create a different element so let's go ahead and uh, in the html file let's go to the end and just before the nav element ends let's create a div with a class of menu bg and we will use this as the background element so here let's type nav menu bg and this should be positioned relative to the nav so for the nav we already set the position to relative so here let's type position absolute and here also let's set the main width to 500 pixels and let's type box shadow and let's set the value to 0 4 pixels 30 pixels negative 8 pixels rgba 0 0 0 and 0 0.3 now here we need to set the height of the menu bg based on the height of the content so for now i'll just add some random value i'll just change this to 300 or let's try 280 pixels and i think that looks all right later we'll go ahead and calculate the height using javascript and set the height to this menu bg right now let's set the left position to 0 and the top position to 42 pixels now here we can see that the width of the element is bit more than what we expect that's because the width of the browser window is too less so for now i'll just add a media query so I'll just tap add media and let's tap max width of 600 pixels so whenever the width of the browser window is less than 600 pixels all the css inside this block will be added to our design so here let's tap nav dot content and let's set the main width to 100 percent of the browser window and let's do the same for the nav menu bg and now we can see we have the correct width and now let's go ahead and change the active class from the first content so let's delete this active class from here and let's add it to the second content so let's add it right here and now we can see that the second content is being displayed over here now let's remove this from here and let's add it to the third one so now we can see that the third content is being displayed so let's remove this and let's add it to the fourth one and now we have the fourth content displayed but the image size is too large so let's go back and here in the media query let's type nav content img and let's set the width to 100 percent and let's set the height to let's try 200 pixels and let's type object fit to cover so that it has a correct aspect ratio and here for the desktop version let's go ahead and type nav content img and let's set the width to 550 pixels and uh, we'll just cut these two lines of code from here and let's paste it over here so when we are on larger screens this will be the width of the image all right so with that we have completed designing this uh, nav menu now in the next video we will add the functionality using javascript all right so that's basically it for this video if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates thanks a lot for watching have a nice day